fairy tales. Stories of undying love between damsels in distress and handsome heroes. Dangerous forests filled with terrible beasts and wonderful magicians. This is the land of Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Rapunzel. The Princess Bride pays magnificent tribute to all of these stories. In fact, the experts agree it may be the most perfect fairy tale ever told. The fairy tale as we know it probably came into existence in the 17th century with the French tradition of the contes de fées, the tales of the fairies. A lot of them contain these archetypal um, images and people such as princesses, giants, uh, wizards. You have princes and royalty, you have commoners, and there's that mix, and that's important. These were written by groups of very intelligent aristocratic women who turned their skills to writing these tales of magic. Hey, how's the city? Huh? A fairy tale is a story that comes out of the oral tradition, is based in oral folklore. When Peter Falk comes in at the beginning with Fred Savage and he's gonna tell him a story, I mean, he's reading him a story, but he's really carrying on that oral tradition. Buttercup was raised on a small farm in the country of Florin. Our favorite pastimes were riding her horse and tormenting the farm boy that worked there. His name was Wesley. It begins in this very pastoral, idyllic setting. You have the common girl who's, who's beautiful. That's a very, very typical thing in fairy tales. And you have this common man who loves her. As you wish. Most of the fairy tales have a heroic structure to them. You have the hero, and the hero begins, and there's a separation. And then there's an initiation or a transformation, and then the hero returns. The cool thing in The Princess Bride is it happens to the hero Wesley. There's the initial separation with Buttercup. He can't afford to marry her, and then he goes away, and he's ostensibly killed. I will never love again. And then he comes back as the man in black. And that's a structure that's archetypal through myth, through other tales, throughout the world, throughout cultures. Cultures that never met each other have this structure. By modern standards, The Princess Bride is unusual in that it tracks the journeys of so many characters, giving us not just one primary hero, but also a heroine. This is very much in keeping with the older fairy tale tradition. My people, the princess. Buttercup! What's interesting is that the Princess Bride almost starts where most fairy tales end. The commoner becomes a princess and is engaged to a prince. That's where most fairy tales end. And that's what's fascinating about it. It takes the tradition of fairy tales and almost turns it on its head by beginning at the ending. When Buttercup moves past her initial social positioning into the role of a princess, she sees how empty it really is and how much more valuable that idea of love, of connection can be. It's really a turning point for her in many ways. Buttercup's emptiness consumed her. Although the law of the land gave Humperdinck the right to choose his bride, she did not love him. Buttercup may seem like a typical princess at first when she accepts the fate that Humperdinck has thrust upon her. But the one thing she still can do is ride her horse. The only joy she found was in her daily ride. And horses are traditionally in literature a symbol of freedom. Um, freedom, power, sexual freedom too. Horses tend to be, you know how little girls often go through a horse phase, and that tends to be just prepubescent. And it seems, so by giving Buttercup that freedom of the horse, there's already a signal that she's not just gonna be a helpless young woman. A word, my lady. We are but poor lost circus performers. 
The group that kidnaps Buttercup, Fezzik, Vizzini, and Inigo Montoya, are classic fairy tale group in that they each have different strengths, and they all come together and sort of make one super being. He didn't fall? Inconceivable. But two-thirds of the monster is also very good-hearted. You never say anything about killing anyone. I swear on the soul of my father, Domingo Montoya, you will reach the top alive. And that's the other thing that's important about a fairy tale group, that like is attracted to like. People with good hearts will end up on the side of the good guy. And that's exactly what happens in The Princess Bride. Well, wait, 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 wait until you're ready. Again, thank you. The Princess Bride draws strongly and well on the fairy tale tradition, but it also draws on other traditions. For instance, the adventure story. The adventure story contains swordplay, contains pirates, and of course we have Wesley's The Dread Pirate Roberts marauding and pillaging for a few years. And Inigo's quest for revenge. The quest for revenge is a huge motif in the adventure story tradition. Men who have been done wrong and are seeking to redress those wrongs. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. So if you talk about the, the three villains comprising these, these three main elements of the hero, Wesley gets to take them on one on one. Sometimes you do have to be able to be nimble and strong and cunning all in one day. Who are you? I am no one to be trifled with. That is all you ever need know. At the core, most of these fairy tales are about character and morality and what people are made of and their will to move forward in these areas. The hero is always a person of tremendous character. And in The Princess Bride, you see that both our heroes have great character. Uh, they both pledge themselves to true love. I asked him what was so important for him here. True love, he replied. Many fairy tales are about the fantasy that if you love someone enough, you can bring them back from the dead. Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, even to a certain extent Little Red Riding Hood, who's going through the forest to help her ailing grandmother. And you, the power of true love in The Princess Bride is just that. It brings Wesley back from the dead. You can die, too, for all I care. Oh. As you wish. Oh, my sweet Wesley. What have I done? Ow. Oh. And then there's the second separation, where he's dead, or mostly dead. You've been mostly dead all day. We have Miracle Max make a pill to bring you back and then they bring him back. And he's made that transformation as well. And he's able to be heroic again. Nevertheless, Wesley cannot do it alone, whether it's with the rescue that Inigo and Fezzik stage, bringing him back from the brink of death, or with Buttercup's help in the fire swamp. Individuals are not as strong as a community, is what the fairy tale tells us. And you must remember, back in those days, nature was not a place that you drove up to in the station wagon, had a cookout with a gas stove, enjoyed it, and then maybe went to the bed and breakfast and got a hot shower. Nature was to be feared. You were constantly fighting the elements for warmth, for food, for shelter, and people didn't go into the forest often alone. <laughs> When you go into the woods or the fire swamp, you don't come out the same person. And we see it happen to Wesley, who goes into the fire swamp, a very elegantly quaffed young bandit or pirate, and comes out in shreds. We see it in Buttercup, who goes into the fire swamp, fearful for her life, and comes out brave enough to sacrifice herself to save Wesley. Promise to return him to his ship. I swear it will be done. Come, sir. We must get you to your ship. The Princess Bride plays up to the notion that things are not necessarily as they appear, and that was one of the core values of the earlier fairy tales, where so many women feared that they'd be marrying monsters, that they would be getting into situations from which there was no escape. Boo! Boo! The crone 
Sons in The Princess Bride are very powerful figures. Um, certainly the woman who yells at Buttercup in her nightmare is not only, is literally waking her up to what she really feels. Why do you do this? Because you had love in your hands and you gave it up. But they would have killed Wesley if I hadn't done it. Your true love lives and you marry another. We see an older woman giving her a critique. Bow to the queen of slime, the queen of filth, the queen of putrescence. That's something which is very true to the spirit of the French fairy tale. Oh! <sighs> what? what? Are you the Miracle Max who worked for the king all those years? Miracle Max is one of the greatest characters in The Princess Bride because he takes us back into the roots of the fairy tale itself, which is magic. If we look at the role of the sorcerer in the fairy tale, not just the sorcerer, the witch, the fairy godmother, the magician at its core, we have the heart of the fairy tale itself, which is magic. Heroes are well and good. Heroines are necessary, but the magician makes the world go round in the world of the fairy tale. But what Goldman and Reiner do is hysterical. They turn, they turn the trope on its head by having the, the miracle worker, the magician, the Merlin, meet the contemporary world where he gets fired. The king's thinking son fired me, and thank you so much for bringing up such a painful subject. While you're at it, why don't you give me a nice paper cut and pour lemon juice on it? We're closed! Valerie performs a similar truth function as a crone in The Princess Bride. Max says he didn't really say true love, he said to blave, he's trying to wheel and deal his way out of it, and Valerie appears out of nowhere, just like the crone in the dream. Liar! Liar! Get back, witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! Valerie serves that same function of stripping away the lies, exposing the truth, and forcing the person that she's talking to to set his or her feet on the path of righteousness and to get and to do it quickly. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? Like? It would take a miracle. Bye bye. Bye. There are two scenes where it looks as though we're at our darkest point, where the heroes are going to be defeated. And one is where Count Rugen knifes Inigo in the stomach. You actually see him talking to his father. I'm sorry, father. I tried. And it's almost as though that communication with his father, that, that connection across the generations is what gives him the strength to defeat Rugen in the end. Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die! No! Offer me money. And that's a very classic fairy tale motif, the dead parent returning to help the child who's in trouble. <laughs> I want my father back, you son of a bitch. Ugh. And the other is where Wesley is lying on the bed helpless and Prince Humperdinck comes in and finds him. But first things first. To the death. No. To the pain. Wesley continues to have these battles of wits to a certain degree too with the prince. Drop your sword. The prince could have totally kicked his butt. And he didn't realize it because he's got all the bravado to, to pull it off. And that's what makes him a fairy tale hero. It may be dishonest, but it's cunning. They rode to freedom. And as dawn arose, Wesley and Buttercup knew they were safe. A wave of love swept over them. And as they reached for each other... What? What? Nah, it's kissing again. You don't want to hear that. You have that big emotional rush at the end. At the end with the kiss, and then at the end with the grandfather and the boy. It just works so perfectly on so many levels. Since the invention of the kiss, there have been five kisses that were rated the most passionate, the most pure. This one left them all behind. Grandpa? Maybe you could come over and read it again to me tomorrow? As you wish. In The Princess Bride, 
William Goldman takes so many elements that you, you instantly recognize from fairy tales that we've all heard growing up, and he weaves them together in a way that's absolutely brilliant. It gave me the idea that fairy tales were still thriving today, that they hadn't faded to something to be forgotten in storybooks, but that they could and should and would be kept alive. I would say The Princess Bride takes stories that people assume they know inside and out and makes them new again, makes them exciting again. And that's exactly what keeps the fairy tale alive. I think it's wonderful for the genre and I expect it'll last for a very long time. <laughs>